everybody. Hope you guys are getting your week off to a great start. Look, here I am. You know the routine. Um, if you believe in the work we're doing, look in the description box and use one of the links or resources to show your support by donating. If you like what you are seeing and hearing, click the like button, click the share button and comment and share uh, and communicate what you think, what you feel. Uh, this is about learning. This is about sharing. It's about growing and subscribe. So now, uh, unless you are somewhere outside of the normal scope of any type of media, social media, um, television, uh, radio, whatever, you understand that Deion Sanders has created quite a stir in Boulder, Colorado uh, as the uh, first year head coach of the Colorado University of Colorado Buffaloes. Completely changed the culture, whether you believe in it or not. I'm not here to sell the culture. I'm not here to sell Dion. I'm here to talk about a specific thing. Uh, but I will say that thing, uh, and I will talk on the back end about some of the expectations and some of the objections, so to speak, uh, from a social and cultural perspective, not so much from a personal uh, thing about as far as what who Dion is and what all that. Dion, I think, is a big boy. He can defend himself. Uh, so, but uh, here we are. And there has been a lot of vitriol and hatred and a bunch of other things aimed at that Dion and now that program and those kids uh, because of the way that Dion did it. I'm not just talking about his flamboyance and his confidence, which I actually uh, support. I think one of the things that is constantly pushed is the idea that for a black man to be accepted, he must in some way acquiesce to this definition of this Eurocentric idea of what is, you know, the Eurocentric idea of what's professional, the Eurocentric idea of what's classy, the Eurocentric idea of what's uh, successful and all of these different things and if he chooses to step outside of the boxes if he chooses to move at the beat of his own drum if he chooses to redefine how he moves in the world then he's a problem and he's labeled as a problem and even some people who come from the same space and place and challenges that he comes from will demand that he gets back in the box because black people getting out of boxes makes other black people uncomfortable as much as it scares whites and so what we have to be careful is are we pushing uh, our brothers and sisters not just Dion anybody that doesn't march to the and be compliant to the status quo or the narrative or the agenda and decides to move in a different direction do we demand they get back in the box I would say so look at the people that we've talked about canceling that look like us over the last few years, it's because they got side out of the box. They did this, this, this. Um, first of all, you need to know who you are. You need to have your own standards, not standards given to you that benefit someone else more than they benefit you, but at least make you feel accepted. See, that's one of the problems we have too. We need to be accepted by the mainstream. We want to be a part of their world. And anything that allows us to do that, we will pretty much sacrifice almost everything to do that. And what we find is we consistently lose ourselves. We contribute to this identity crisis that we have. And we never, ever pursue or explore the idea that maybe me stepping out of that and being who I am naturally and what I feel best doing is what God designed me to do in the first place. And maybe what these people that I'm demanding that they act a certain way and move a certain way and, and all of that may be they're the ones that are doing it the way it's supposed to be done. Just just an exploration of an idea. But anyway, uh, there, there was a big, you know, Dion wasn't expected to be successful. Uh, so far, he is 3-0. Uh, the first game, he was definitely expected to lose. He was a 20.5 point under, underdog. Uh, the next week, uh, I think it was a little better. Um, 
but he won against TCU. They put up 45 points. The next week, they put up 30-something points. Uh, this week, they put up another 42, 43, something like that um, in double overtime. Uh, but it's not the games and winning the games that I'm here to talk to you about. Um that's good because I want him to succeed because so many people want him to fail and for the wrong reasons. Uh, what I'm here for is there's this moment. To me, it outshines all of the stuff that took place. First of all, trash dude, I, I don't even know his name, that hit uh, Travis Hunter well after the play was over. Should be banned from football. I understand that he has uh, convictions for sexual abuse um, that were confirmed uh, from what I can gather by uh, the district uh, the district attorney there in that state. Uh, but he needs to be banned from playing football at the college level. That was not just a uh, unsportsmanlike or unnecessary roughness. That was literally targeting to harm. Um, there's no place in any sport for that. Um, I don't know what the... T current uh diagnosis and prognosis is for travis but i understand he's going to be out at least a few weeks uh i hope he heals uh i hope he gets well that's first and foremost uh before anything about football i just want him to be healthy seems like a very good kid uh especially understanding his background which again is brings me to why i'm here there's this moment out of all the hoopla out of all the things that went on in that game great game i mean all kind of celebrities there on the sidelines in the boots i mean in the uh suites just something colorado's never experienced and you don't see this happen at a regular college game just a game nothing this isn't the championship this is the third game of the season uh two in-state rivalries playing rivalries playing each other but you saw that so it's all this distraction all these things in some kind, kind of way uh both coaches were able to keep their players in it and played a good game um you know maybe you paid attention to the stuff that uh the other coach had said about Dion, and uh Dion brought his mom in uh, and did they did an interview and she said what she had to say about it and it, it was it was all the drama all the stuff that makes uh, people want to watch. I get all that. But there's a moment in this game where uh, Jimmy Horn Jr., a very talented receiver who has had an unbelievable year so far, was really struggling. He had just dropped a ball that was put on him right on the money uh, that would have gave him a first down. And he was really getting down on himself. And Dion called him over walked out on the field and met him he didn't even pull him all the way to so he walked on the field and met him and he put his hand on his shoulder and at that moment he said something to him he wasn't yelling at him he wasn't boisterously boister, uh boisterously moving his hands he was talking to him you know as you can tell was concerned you you don't know what it was but i can tell you whatever it was was so powerful that before he could even finish, this kid is already putting his hands out to get a hug. And what that tells me, I've watched him do this in practice. He did this when he was at Jackson State. So this isn't just about the kids at Colorado. But he reaches out and he hugs Dion and they embrace and he sends him back out. And this kid is the kid who catches the touchdown that ties the game to send it into overtime. Now, it's not about what happened on the field after that. It's about that moment. That's the moment that I've been talking about for 20 years. I'm getting emotional because it means something to me. It means something to me on a way that people don't understand why I do what I do. Let me tell you, I'm going to be real transparent with you. It's not anything new. You've probably heard it before because I'm very open. But I was, I, I, I could feel Jimmy Hummer. See, you know, Jimmy Hunter's. I mean, not Jimmy Hunter. I'm thinking Travis Hunter. Jimmy Horn Jr.'s father is incarcerated. He doesn't have a father figure. That, and that's what people miss. I've watched it. Travis Hunter lives with Dion. Travis Hunter, the one that got hurt. Jimmy Horn Jr., you can look at these kids and the way they gravitate around them and the way they stand up for each other. These are brothers. They've become brothers. And it, it, it permeates. It's there. But what I watched is this kid being fathered 
coach put down the cliff board for a minute and spoke to his heart and lifted his confidence and let him know that no matter what happens on that field, I still love you. If you haven't had a dad have that talk with you, you don't understand. See, I, kn I know how Jimmy Horn Jr. feels because, see, I never know, knew my dad. And, and I said this earlier. If I'm honest with myself, there's still a part of me at 56 that yearns to have a relationship with a dad I never knew. And when I say I never knew the man, I never met him while he was alive. First time I saw him was at his funeral, well, his weight. First time I ever saw this man that I longed to know. I was 14 years old and he was in a casket. So when they lured that body into the ground the following day after his funeral, every dream, every vision, every idea that I had about a relationship with him was buried with him. And I was in my 30s just one one vision, one dream, one accomplishment after another. I'm just knocking them down and I'm just killing them. And, and then I sit down and remember this promise I said to I made to my journalism teacher after I wrote an article that she got published nationally called The Invisible Father about absentee fatherhood. I said I was going to turn that article into a book because it needed to be explored more. I sit down to write that book. And as I wrote that book, I started to realize it was so cathartic. I started to realize that I had spent my adult life. Well, even the rest of my childhood after that funeral and my adult life until this point, I had spent it trying to prove my worthiness of love to a man who had long died. That's the power of the presence or the absence of a father. You know, there are things that happen. Trust me. And ladies, don't be that one. Don't be that one interfering with that relationship because of what happened between you and his dad or her dad. Don't be that one. <laughs>
And that alone to me, I, I mean, in, in, in this idea that everybody's got these standards, these Afrocentric standards that they want Dion to operate through. And they are using an, an, an I, I, idealistic measuring stick to judge him by, to those who are doing it, to those who are showing support and love, I'm not talking to you, to those who just absolutely hate him, I'm talking to you either. But to those of you that are saying, well, he ain't do this, and then he did this, he, let me tell you something. The, those ideals sound good. Those ideals sound, sound good when you're having discussions. They are great for debate. But they are rarely realized in life. Things overlap. Nobody has everything aced out. Nobody's operating on this standard. And when you find the people who are operating the way that you are trying to get people to operate, they die broke and they don't even have. If it wasn't for Amari, uh, Amari Stoudemire, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen would have been having a GoFundMe, one of the most brilliant freaking minds in history and Egyptology bar none we didn't take care of him he did it the way we told him to you don't need to capitalize it you don't need to monetize it you don't need to do this don't charge for and all this and he just kept giving he just kept giving he just kept giving and we sucked the freaking life out of him Dion is building based off of what we live. We live in a world of capitalism. If you don't have money, you're at the mercy of the people who do. And you can say what you want. You can act how you want unless we are able to create an autonomy through which we function and don't need them. The idea of us being sitting around here talking about money ain't important. We need, we need to be capitalizing on opportunities and enriching ourselves and the ones we love. We should be building wealth, which whether we are anywhere, we should be building wealth because wealth is the way that you ensure that your uh, preceding progeny, those who come from your loins, your generations out projected outward are covered, not starting where you start, not having to go through the exact same thing to get on their feet as you. That should be a progressive growth to at, at some point. There's a generation of children who are literally underwritten and can walk out and actually live in the power of who they are, unleash their imagination, unleash their potential without economic restraint. And if we're not doing that, we're failing them. So what I see is, yes, Dion's looking out for himself. Any person with a half a brain should. He built that. He built the brand. Prime is his brand. He built it. And he's been monetizing and using it for decades, and now he's using it in another way, but he's also helping young children who were being overlooked or who were being mishandled by a system and then spit out. This NIL deal, this transfer portal has changed the game, and he has played it better than anybody at this particular point. And I think the young men who operate underneath him are going to be better for it. Does he have some things that he's done that I don't agree with? Absolutely. And if somebody were to look at my life, they'd say the same damn thing about me. What I'm looking at is, is he, and then you got to think about the collective impression that he's making. He, he's, he's having a positive effect on people who have been feeling uh, downtrodden, overwhelmed, overpowered, outmanned, outgunned, forever. All of a sudden, people are starting to talk with a little more pep. People are starting to talk about their dreams a little bit more. People are starting to talk about their aspirations. People, and, and, and it's amazing how that happens. Now, what should be happening, instead of trying to douse his fire, you should take just a little bit of it and set your life on fire so that you can set others. And then when you set your life on fire, you get to live it under the principles you want to live it under. But what we can't do is sit up and demand this idealistic uh, type of life that nobody's living to try to put somebody in a box. Because the truth of the matter is, you have an issue with that success. I don't have an issue with nobody's success. Everybody should have the success that they worked hard for and they built. 
and he worked hard. He's gifted, but he worked hard. He showed up. I know the stories about this guy. So he showed up and he does it as in everything he does. He does it as a businessman. He's doing it as a coach. He shows up. He's up. He's not just sitting around being pretty. He shows up. And that's the same thing with you. Show up, do your thing, make your thing happen, and then you can do it the way you want to do it. But I am just like blown away at that moment. I saw it and now pictures are floating around, but I saw it and I'm like, man, look at this. To me, how, and at that point they were losing and it didn't seem like they had the answer. And when I saw that moment, I said, it don't even matter if they win. To me, he won at that moment with the way he handled that young man, because you gotta think, it's Dion's brand and name that's going to get hammered in that press conference and he admitted he said that was a point in time after the game he admitted that was a point in time i said man this i can't let this dude beat me this press conference is going to be unbearable if this dude wins he says he thought about it but even in thinking about that he didn't lay that burden on jimmy on jimmy horn jr when he dropped that ball he stood up and told him whether we win or lose i love you Come on, man. He, he, he's sitting up there telling him, hey, you are who you think you are. You're that dude. You can go out there and you can be that dude. Go out there. But whatever happens, you loved. You still have a place. It's nothing like having permission to be yourself without fear of if I step out here and stumble. Thinking you have to be perfect will create more mistakes than you can ever imagine. So I just had to. I had to come on and say, man, to me, you know, the game, I'm glad they won. But to me, at the moment that that dude had that conversation with that kid, it was a, it was a win. Period. So on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Like I said at the beginning, if you like what you see, click the like button. If you believe in what we're doing, look in the description box and find a way to support our work. And our work is extensive. If you haven't kept up with me and you don't know the work I do, there's a link to the organization's official website, the Odyssey Project. Look, look in there and you can see it all. We're actually right now doing an update on the blueprint 1.0 if you're not familiar with the blueprint it is a comprehensive plan for black empowerment that i created man over 10 years ago uh it's had the uh co-signing of one of the people i consider to be a mentor dr claude anderson his wife joanne and, uh and some others um but i am updating it so i'm looking for insight and input and suggestions on what we can add to it, what we can modify in it. But somebody had to do something, and I, I decided I didn't see agenda. I didn't see everything. I hear everybody talking, but I didn't see it anywhere where you can go look at it. So I created it and everything else that's on there. So ch go check all that stuff out. But if you believe in what we're doing, give. Um, if you think that this is something that you can grow from, subscribe. Uh, on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Thank you guys for allowing me to come into your space for a short period. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like it. That just ain't good enough. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Free, I, I'm free.
to be whoever I want to be.